this episode of the Roundtable Podcast, we got a special guest, high school friend of Danny's. Yep, high school friend, Ohio State legend. You're going to learn all, all about confidence today. Yeah, it kind of looks like Cole's older brother. Yeah, basically, uh, <laughs> you know, first team all neck, but yeah, have a Buckeye <laughs> legend. Dude, if you're a Buckeye fan, like, and just a businessman in general, like, you're going to fucking love this episode. <clears throat> yeah, there's some great sports stories in here, like Buckeyes fan, football fan in general. Like you can definitely take away like some key li- like life lessons and shit from this episode. I love the mentality of the family, the work ethic, the uh, expectation. I think that there's a ton of takeaways, uh, all aspects for the show. Let's go to the show. <laughs> Roundtable podcast. I'm your boy Corey G. Small Arms Danny at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susek, brought to you by MaxEverMuscle.com and Sam Adams. We got Zach Bourne, Ohio State legend in the house today and very successful businessman. Shit, I look on my bank account every month here at MaxEverMuscle.com and see Bourne Brothers. Bang, hit me because I got the <laughs> trash can out there. Yeah, Killer. I appreciate it, man. And the brand. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. You know, branding on the outside of it, the whole nine, bro. I, first off, I, if I'm going to pay a trash man, I'm yeah. paying this man. <laughs> That's right. And secondly, like, I'm, I want to support Buckeye Legends. And this guy right here has done an amazing job of the name and likeness and leveraging it. And so, anyway, just shout out Someone's to you, Someone's got to take out your trash, man. It might as well be me. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. hey. Right. So, I got a quick trash man story mm-hmm. for you. All right. So, one of my first big clients I ever get in New Albany. I'm, I'm in a home. $100 an hour. He lives in like this 15,000 square foot house, this old Italian dude from Florida who owned a trash business. And so I went in there and I tried to big time him the first time. His name is Emil Tandis. If he's still alive, shout out Emil. You the man. (laughs) Taught me a lot. Mafia. Basically, yeah. 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 So I roll in and I tell him, I said, sir, you know, I I take my 10 sessions. I've told this story before, but I I take my 10 sessions up front, you know, and that'll be $1,000 or something like that. He looked at me. And, dude, this house was like, I mean, he had $25,000 chandeliers, all these paintings. I helped him move to Florida, like, later. And so I figured out how much money he really had, which was a lot. He goes, you know what? This is how it's going to work. How much you say he charges? Charges $100 a session, sir. But I usually get it up front. And he said, I got this drawer right here, and there's a lot of $100 bills in there. (laughs) You stand right there, and you go over there, and you train my wife. You walk over here. I'm going to give you $100 each time. He said, because... I've been doing big business for a long time and I realize I want to make sure that the service is being done. And then I was like, and then I was like, well, what'd you do? He's like, yeah, it took out the trash. You know, he yeah. we're sitting <laughs> in this like 12,000 square foot house. One of the first that was in Wexter's property. Yeah. I mean, big baller dude. Man. But he said that, um, you know, his business was similar size. I know kind yeah. of what around what your numbers yeah. are. And he just did it for a really long time. His money was crazy, bro. He had, carpet in his garage he wanted to put his slippers on when he pulled the s5 in oh my he was God. a next level pat bro so i'm just saying like there's a uh, dude that is real life mafia that's right what there. i'm saying oh you need God. carpet in your garage yeah, that's the only time i've ever heard that i've never only time i was so tripped out i've, I've never, never heard this story all right yeah so i've never been in an s6 i've never been in the s class before right so he's like hey you want to go out to lunch i'm like yeah dude he pulls out the s600 it's like <laughs> gunmetal gray gangster as oh. fuck i get in this thing and it must have been already out of the garage because I didn't, I didn't see the carpet game at first. And then so we go out, and he got TV screens and the whole thing. He was, like, real into all that stuff. But he's, like, 80 at this point. We get home. He opens up the garage, pulls that bitch in, and it's got, like, plush carpet on it. So I'm thinking to myself, like, What's fuck? this for? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what so I go, raining out? I go, Abel. I go, well, he just replaces it. He goes, I go, you, you got, like, high-end carpet in your garage. He goes, you know what? Just figured out a long time ago when I pull in, I just want to get out and put my slippers on. <laughs> and I was like, I, my mind oh was my blown God. multiple. I was like, this is what I want my life to be like. Yeah. fucking levels right there. So, uh, yeah. levels. Yeah. And literally. So I anyway. think everyone listening has a picture in their mind of what this guy looks like. You know, everyone's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Yep, yep. that's it. Big Italian dude, slick yeah. back, white hair, gangster. Is bro. he wearing like a fucking robe too in this situation or what? I mean, he could have done what he could have walked yeah. around this wang out. I mean, was the carpet you- purple or red? Carpet? No, it was like it was almost like a like an off white. Oh, too. Wow. that's what didn't even make oh, any sense. Right. It was like that. That right. and he he wore a presidential rolly. It's the first time I ever saw yep. one of those. His shit was iced out like a rapper. <laughs> we went to fucking Wendy's one time, and he went to um, he was like, you know, can I? He ordered a burger or whatever, and he went to get it, and the person at the window was like, is that a presidential? He looked at me like, I didn't even think anybody knew what this was. I'm like. Dude, he looked like a rap star. I'm like, of course yeah. they know what that yeah. is. Anyway, oh so my that's my only other he trash guy. He was 80 and his down. wife was 50. Bro, 
fat. Yeah. I'm telling you. So there you go. That's what right. you got to live up to, Born. That's great. God. Yeah. No, I know Cole, we wanted to, we wanted to ask um, some football stuff out the gate, yeah. right? Obviously, that's where we want to start. That I, I We didn't get to a lot of business last time we saw you, which was yeah. a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. But I got a lot of questions there, but I'll yeah. let you go ahead. Well, go. first off, I think it needs to be mentioned that Small Arms Danny actually was the – you were you were blocking for this guy, right? High school? Yeah, at one point. Yeah, goal, yeah, yeah. Line, goal line. Yeah. yeah. Were you were you an O lineman? Dude, it was me. For Borat? It was yeah. me. Yes. Well, that too, but like. Yes. Dude, for, he was an O lineman for me. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. That's amazing. What well, <laughs> was epic was on goal line, it was me. Born and fucking Blaine in the backfield. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Blaine in the backfield. In the backfield. Yeah. Oh wow, Blaine's yeah. a 500 pound front squatter. Oh no no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, we had like an 800 pound backfield. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Straight yeah. Down <laughs> well, yeah, because Blaine played at Harvard. Yeah. yeah. Not like yeah. he's a slouch either. So jeez. No, yeah, yeah, he was bigger too. I mean, yeah. damn. Oh, Blaine was big. Yeah, back yeah there. he crossed I mean, 300. Yeah. Oh, Blaine, Blaine, yeah, Blaine was probably listed at like 260. He was uh, pushing 300. Yeah. yeah. Wow. He's a big dude. Yeah. <laughs> big what fucker. was uh, small arms Danny pushing? Uh, probably every bit of two. I was, you know, based on Kristoff's fucking uh, grandma's day. Yeah, you know, two fifteen. I was gonna oh, say oh, I nice. would have guessed two twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have guessed two. How much were so. you playing at then? Um, uh, like were like you two fifty? So you, yeah, you were bigger than yeah. Danny in the back. Oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like so you got two twenty small arms. <laughs> yeah, two fifties yeah. for it, and Blaine at three bills. Yeah. Get oh, the yeah. fuck oh, yeah. out of here, dude. Dude, I was <laughs> in. I, hey, listen, <laughs> listen. I was in a two point. Both these guys were in a three point. That's what it was. I was standing yeah. behind these guys, and yeah, that's incredible. right or left. That was so it. Amazing. Goal line, dude. That's like, did you wear a neck roll? I feel like you should have worn a neck cowboy collar. Oh, nice cowboy collar. Nice. Yeah. Dude, those were Respect. so fucking cool back then. They were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're still cool now. They still are. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll come well, back. I, I don't know you if this is correct. You just got to be able to pull it off. I don't know if yeah, this yeah. is correct, but I heard that they actually quit producing cowboy collars. Really? Yeah, I, I heard that they don't make – I still I don't know. So they don't make me I, I went cowboy collar, and then once I got full cage, then I was – Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Man, this yeah. is amazing. I was, I was a full well, cage guy. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, that's good. I Well, I think we need to start out because your brothers were – like your family's like a Michigan – family originally yeah. right yeah, yeah, yeah so we should like i i think we should talk about like the recruiting process because did you get recruited by trestle i did yeah 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 so let's talk about like that whole dilemma and what that was like yeah so that was uh you know that's a cool process it's uh when you're in that situation you know it's first off you're fortunate right yeah. for division one schools coming in and, and visiting you and i was thankful enough that pickerington central man we had coaches coming in all the time so mm-hmm. um yeah, so you were around that, and you kind of knew how to uh, operate the recruiting process. Because nowadays, let's be honest, there's some kids that they get in the recruiting process and eats them alive, yeah. right? It, it's almost like it's almost as bad as agents are with the NFL. You know, you start getting that, and before they even step on college campus, their their careers are derailed. But um, yeah, both of my parents went to Michigan. My mom ran track there. My dad played football there. Um, and so growing up, we always went to Ann Arbor. Like, that's just what we did. I was a guy living in Columbus, Ohio, wearing Michigan stuff all the time. And, uh, that's so wild. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I remember when my older brother was getting recruited, you know, he had offers from all over the country. I mean, Pete Carroll's coming in, Bob Stoops is coming in. And I mean, just everyone, seeing these guys as a young, yeah. like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, when he was getting recruited, you know, I was, uh, the, like eighth grade going into my freshman year of high school. So I'm lifting with the high school team and I'm like, Oh my God, like, these Pete coaches Carroll's are here, right? Nuts. Like Pete Carroll's here. Like, what the hell are you doing? You know, wow. you talking to my brother? What the hell are you talking to my so brother cool. for? You know, <laughs> so I, remember cool. your, I remember your brother coming in randomly in like no warm up, fucking straight oh, yeah. cold, hops on the bench and starts. Hey, I've, I've got a, I've got a great story. Depending on how long this goes, I've, I've got a great story yeah, about my brother. We'll, we'll yeah. hold on to that. So they, um, so as the recruiting process goes on, Justin's like telling everyone, Hey, it's either Ohio State or Michigan. That That's it. You know, thanks. But that's kind of where I'm going. He wanted to go to Ohio State. He was set on going to Ohio State. He had written a letter to Coach Carr and the Michigan coaches. Hey, thank you for everything, but, you know, this is what I'm doing. Um, And and basically told Coach Tress, hey, I'm coming, right? Mm -hmm. And so Coach Tress knew it was coming. You guys, you know Coach Tressel, so you know what kind of guy he is. Amazing. And so Coach Tressel told my parents, like, hey, we're going to lay off them a little bit. We kind of know this is coming. Obviously, it's a big thing for the family. You guys take care of business. We're here for when yeah. it happens. And, uh, well, Justin was never told that, right? Oh, and wow. so my dad takes him up to Michigan 
And wouldn't you know it, the guy who catches word of this, and to this day, I've only seen my dad cry one time. His dad passed away, uh, but the one day I saw him cry is when Bo Schimbeckler passed away, yeah. right? And so we go up there, and Bo and my dad were super tight. We sat in Bo's office for like three hours. And Bo is reading Justin the right act, like, hey, this is where you're going to be. I'm making the decision From for you. Bo Schemblack. Uh, yeah, uh, wow. I mean, he's just saying this is what's going on. It's like on. Woody Hayes saying no it doubt. to you, bro. Yeah. No yeah. doubt. So, uh, so we did that. We spent the week in Ann Arbor. Two weekends later, we go back up to Ann Arbor. Guess whose office we sat in, sit in again? Bo. And Bo is now pulls in Coach Carr. Hey, Justin's coming here. This is kind of the way this is going down. And... Once you know it, by the time we leave there, Justin commits to Michigan, right? And so uh, as time goes on, I'm getting recruited now because, you know, I'm going to my sophomore year of high school, and I was fortunate enough to play as a freshman. And so Coach Carr, like, offers me a scholarship at the same time. Like, Justin kind of commits, and I'm like, hell yes. Like, I'm coming to Michigan too, right? Yeah, like, yeah. sign me up. <laughs> and then Coach Rodriguez comes in, you know, and totally oh, flipped right. everything upside down. Um, oh, he sure did. No doubt. So <laughs> yeah. I was, you know, I was a junior in high school then. And so like, I'm in the thick of things and it kind of goes back to the same thing. Like, Hey, I'm going, I'm committed to Michigan. You know, how series recruited me, Penn state, Michigan state. But really it was like, Hey, I'm going to Michigan. Once Justin transferred and goes to Ohio state, I'm like, well, <laughs> I, I, I can't really go to Michigan anymore, you know? And, and coach Rodriguez was doing some crazy thing with like recruiting. He's like, Hey, I want my guys, you know, I'm reevaluating re everyone. I'm like, okay, I respect it. Well, at that point, I'm like, hey, this is a done deal. You know, Coach Fickle, Coach Tress have been recruiting me. Kind of some of the stories that come up about Coach Tress and them laying off had finally come to light. And I'm like, man, it, it's home. You know, Col yeah. Columbus, Ohio is where I've always been. Ohio State's a great college. Um, I mean, obviously, it's one of the best universities in the world, For you sure. know? So. Uh, ended up committing to Ohio State and kind of the rest is history from that standpoint. But it it's a whirlwind of a process, but it's really cool to go through because there are so many ups and downs and there's so many different feelings. And um, this is a funny story. The day I committed, actually, so I knew it was kind of coming. Uh, it was during baseball season. Danny and I played baseball together, too. And uh, Shout out small. Shout out. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, <laughs> Two sport athlete. Yeah. It, yeah, it was baseball season. Well, during the off season, I'd always get up at 5 a.m. and go work out with Jeff LaMonaco, who's the defense coordinator at Pickering Central. And um, that was the time I could lift. So I'm pulling out. I think Justin's normally in college, right? He's normally in Ann Arbor. Well, he had finally, like, he's home. And I didn't realize. I parked in the garage, and it's, you know, 5 in the morning. I'm like, man, as a high school kid. I pull out of the garage, Slam not no car. slammed into his truck. <laughs> you know, he's parked like right behind me. I'm not looking behind me. Slam right into his truck. I'm like, fuck. So I go work out, come back. I literally walk in the house. I go into my parents' bathroom. I'm like, hey, I'm committing to Ohio State. And I literally call Coach Pickle and committed. And they didn't even know I hit the car. So then once they hit the car, they're like, oh, shit. Can't get mad at you now. You yeah. just committed. That's amazing. That's, great. Yeah. That's Perfect so good. Timing. Well, and just. Yeah. Playing with your brother had to be unbelievable. Like to be on the same team as your brother, obviously being in the rivalry on the other side than your parents were is also interesting. Like, and then your historic pictures against Michigan. It's like the whirlwind of personal emotion and playing and family all mixed in this whole thing for you guys is pretty wild. Zach. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a crazy story when you put it like that. Um, I guess it kind of hits home a little bit more. Yeah. I never even think about that. There's a know? lot, dude. Th there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Like, I don't um, know I've met anyone else that's been intertwined that much and then that has transferred and actually played and, like, the, you know, and with their parents. It's just – it's a lot, which is why I think you continue to come up in a lot of conversations is because you were weaved in so differently. No doubt. <laughs> I, well, I grew up on the rivalry, right? Yeah. That, that weekend came along. It didn't matter. You know, when I was two years old, I knew what that game meant. It's like, hey, listen, it's yeah. here. This means everything. And so then when you get to the point of I was on the other side and now I'm on this side and it's like we're in it and I'm playing in it mm -hmm. and I've got um, – I, I can be a uh, – I'm part of the outcome, so to yeah. speak, right? That's, I'm yeah, literally gotta, in the yeah. thick of the that's things, gotta you know? Crazy, yeah. It's like, that's the crazy part is growing up and being a big fan of it, you go to the game, you watch the game. Now I'm actually in the middle of it. Hell and yeah. depending on how I play, depending on what I do, is going to depend on who wins this game. Um, so that that was that was cool. And then you fast forward and um, I ended up, I, I got married last year and I married a Michigan grad. 
Wow. So, of course it's, you did. Wow. It's all fucked oh, up. Of course you did. It's all fucked up. I know. What am I yeah. doing? <laughs> that... So That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so now it comes full circle. Yeah, I, mar- I married a Michigan grad. So, has your dad? Because obviously, I've been to your tailgate before. It's like, has your dad then kind of switched with both you guys? Like, what's his what's his stance? Because you're both Michigan. You you know, obviously, him and your mom. Yeah. But you live in Columbus. Both your boys end up here. But your, his affection towards a guy like Bo, obviously, yeah. who he played for. It's like, where the fuck's he sit at at this point? I think, I mean, you guys have been there. I think now he's completely Ohio State. Okay, you know, that's what I it think, seemed like, yeah. Um, you know, he grew up in Columbus, Ohio. He, oh, lo- okay. he loved the Buckeyes, um, went to East more. If Woody was still co- – if Woody wouldn't have gotten fired in 79, my dad would have oh, went to Ohio State, it. Okay, and I wouldn't be here. That makes you know? sense. So, um, but then once kind of everything happened and he went to Michigan, I, I just, you know, my little brother played too, so my parents went 10 years – of having a son play at Ohio State. Imagine that. You know, a lot a lot of parents <laughs> will go a lot of parents will go three to four years, right? You're following the team, yeah, you're going to every yeah. game, you're going on the road, you're doing all that stuff. They went ten years in a row of traveling, you know, Ohio State football season, being a parent, being involved. What? So I think after that amount of time, it's just like, hey, it's ingrained in me. Yeah, that makes sense. This, this is who I am now. So cool. Yeah. Well the um for business for a second, it's like he obviously had the freedom because he ran his own business to be able to follow you guys around yeah. the country, which is also, you know, seeing your dad, obviously everybody's dad most of the time or their parent is on a pedestal, right? Your dad's a big dude. He plays ball. He's running this business. Like he probably had to look 10 foot tall, you know, yeah. as you're growing up. Right. And then you get to see him build this company, put all this work in. So it's like the, what he was showing you guys, you and your brothers is, is pretty amazing, dude. So, I mean, just speak on that for a sec. Cause I think that's, that's got to be – now you're living it is right. my point. I think it's one of those things that as any kid, you never you never truly understand until you've been there, you know, um, and, and, or until you're there. And so now looking back, I'm like, man, what that dude was able to do and just juggling stuff. And, um, you know, I, I remember – it's funny, though. You bring this up, and my dad's a crazy businessman, you know, started by working – multiple jobs, started the business while being a manager at Consolidated Freightways, working the working the freaking docks, right? Yeah. And, and doing mm-hmm. manual labor. And then he's kind of grown it to this. But even when we were playing for so long, he used to always I mean, he used to always say, I'd give my left nut to be where you're at. And we always be like Dude, like, stop, man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're just the old man. You know, yeah. you just wish you had. He was uh, dead serious, though. Dead serious. But you never really take it seriously until you're in this spot, <laughs> right? And now I'm in my uh, I'm in this position. He's kind of rode off in the sunset enjoying life, which he should be. Yeah. But now I'm looking back. I'm like, man, you know, like New Year's Eve this past year when Ohio State's playing uh, Georgia. I'm like. I'd give my freaking left nut to be out there, even though, you know, we've already talked about it, the the business and how much it's grown and how yeah. the luxuries that I have of running my own business, it goes back to, man, I would do anything to be there. I think that's why we train in the gym every day, yes. right? Because it's like, you never want to lose, you never want to lose it, whatever it is. And it can be so many things for so many people. Yes. You never want to lose it. And it's hard to, you know, and I think with football, it's taken out. It's out of your control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's why a lot of ex-players really fuck with like what we got going on in the in the morning because we still got a team, we're still pushing, and the it for us is still competing in powerlifting, yeah. right? And so, even though I'm still able to do it, it's you know I'm ban- I'm I'm in my Tom Brady years, so no I'm doubt. putting it together. Yeah. But the reality is, I thought I used to think about this all the time. All right, somebody comes and bought everything out, did whatever. What would I do still on Wednesday? still come here and try to get my squat going up, bro. hundred percent. You know what I mean? So like, I, I think that you get that realization when you really love something and you're passionate about it. And then you can identify with what your old man was saying is like, that feeling doesn't really go nowhere if you really got it, bro. Yeah. And so that's, and that's an intangible, I think to all of it, reality. There's always something out there that I think, um, is bigger than just your day to day. Yeah. You know, there's, there's always something that, that pushes you, that wakes you up every morning and says, Hey, let's go do this thing, you know? And, and the people that lose that fire, lose that thing inside of them to say, Hey, I'm going to get out of bed, put my feet on the ground and go. That's when you start having issues, yeah, you know? Facts. And I think, um, that's why, and I think maybe we talked about this last time. I think that's why so many guys after they get done playing ball yeah. have such an issue because they're trying to find out who they are, you know, and that it that has always, um, 
that's always been there, right? I'm putting my feet on the ground. I'm going to the gym because, and I'm going to throw on my pads. You know, when when spring ball comes, mm-hmm. when fall camp comes, when the season comes, they lost it. You yeah. know, and so it's so hard for them to mentally prepare. So thank God for the business. Thank God for my dad. Yeah, and, you know, it t- it kind of comes full circle that if it weren't for him. Who knows? I might be one of those guys that I'm still trying to find out what that it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and I often wonder there's going to be a time where I can't do that anymore. Not yeah. anytime soon, hopefully. Right. But I think that I would have – that's going to be – my wife always says, you're going to be grouchy when you can't lift heavy. Because I have points of time where if I'm banged up, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Drives me fucking crazy. So I couldn't imagine if, like, obviously at a football level, you're done it sooner than later than most. And it's like, what's the average in the NFL? Three? Maybe I don't even think it's you know three I mean? now. Yeah. I think it's less. You so know, with all the guys coming yeah. in every year, so it's like that would be an, a really, really tough transition. Which is why when when there is players around here, I try to be like, because yeah. I know that that camaraderie is what they're missing. You know what I mean? And that pop. Hundred percent. So that's why I'm trying to get you here from spin class. <laughs> I'm just fucking you know, with you. <laughs> hey man, you know I, I do need to get out here sometimes, <laughs> but you know, spit is spin is my it. You know, yeah, that's what gets go. it going. Yeah, Zach, you done put plenty of time in the squat rack. Yeah, <laughs> oh, you're yeah. good. Well, I was gonna say like, what is that drive for you? Or like, what do, like now? What is the, like what keeps you coming back to the well? I think it's a mixture of the business standpoint, right? Knowing that, uh, seeing what my dad did. And now that I'm my, in my position, I want to, you know, who knows, hopefully my wife, you, you've, you have kids now, right? Hopefully my wife and I are, are fortunate enough to be able to have kids. But when I have kids, I want to be able to do things that my dad did. I want to oh, be able yeah. to get up and go. I want to be able to, uh, give my kids things that even I didn't have. And I, my dad busted his ass, but we weren't to the point where we are now from when I was he growing was up, building right? it. he was building it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I want to continue building it. I saw what he did. So that's kind of my, it is, yeah. Hey, he passed the baton on, you know, it's a, it's like a relay race. When, when you're running a, a four by one, yep. the guy in the first, the guy in the second, like, guess what? He wants to run a, a faster split than the guy in the first. Right. So it's yep. like, I'm doing my job now to, to, to kind of carry the business. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, man, when you own a business and you, give it your all and you are growing something and you're building a culture at work and you're doing all the small things in the long run, it's going to, it's going to pay off. Look, I mean, dude, look where you're at, right? From where you were to where you are now, I guarantee you there's things that you can provide for your family. There's certain things that you're able to do. I've seen you sailing in the middle of the Caribbean with (laughs) your shirt off, right? There was probably a point you couldn't do that, you know? And so now you're able to do those things and it's just, you know, I, I don't want to say it's uh, shallow of me thinking like those are the cool things you get to do, but that's just, that's the reality Life's of life. Life's about experiences, bro. No doubt. Well, I would say like, it was funny. Me and Dustin were just talking about this yesterday. That was like a, for me when I was little, uh, I never, I never went on vacation and we never saw, I never saw the ocean until spring break when I met my wife actually at Panama city when I was in college. I'd I'm never sure it was been a great trip. Amazing. <laughs> yes. I didn't know I was finding my wife, but I did. You know what I'm saying? Shout out but Rachel, yeah, yeah, shout out Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> still, still, we you still married to Rachel? It. Yeah, All you right. have a Rachel too. I have a Rachel. Yeah, man, it's good. Some about Rachel. Some about Rachel uh, from uh, Friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it was <laughs> like, fuck out of here. My <laughs> wife's named after Rachel from Friends. I think really? most wow. of them yeah. are, buddy. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think Boom's wife's name is Rachel too. I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. So it's one of those things where I think, you know, you're really you're looking at the next generation, how you progress it, like you said. Your dad was building it a lot of these times, but still had the freedom to be there, right? Yep. You're hope to have kids soon. So it's like you want to have that same freedom. And that was a lot of my stuff was based around my parents really couldn't make it to nothing because yep. they didn't have that freedom, which is another reason why I wanted to be an entrepreneur so bad because I can be the assistant rec basketball coach if I want to be. Yep. And I got the time to, you know what I mean? So it's like that stuff was like carried a lot of value in me building the business. And there's there's really no dollar figure attached to it. A hundred percent. There is no, but your kids will net like you never forgot that he did that. Correct. Never. It's the experiences. You just brought it up, right? It's knowing that my dad was there, even though Danny will tell you PYA, sometimes he's yelling at me (laughs) across the field, right? (laughs) He looks intense. Oh yeah. He's that guy. But still, if he wasn't there, I wouldn't be who I am now, you know, and it doesn't matter if I've got, uh, sons, daughters, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. I just want to be there for them, whether it be at a dance recital or football. I mean, I hope it's football, but yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, be really, soccer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. yeah. So obviously we, we talked about, you know, you, 
you've learned like leadership wise, like, you know, business and sports, they, there are a lot of similarities, a lot of parallels, but you got to learn from your dad running the business and probably two of the best coaches in college football history and Jim Trestle and Urban Meyer. So what are like the, the, what are the things that you've taken away from those guys and implemented in running the business? Uh, yeah, I got into this um, with Peters when, okay. when him and I did mm -hmm. a little bit of one of his pods and you know, I went to college and got a sports management degree. I always thought I was going to be the guy that whenever I got done playing, I was going to put on a suit and tie, live in the big city, work in the front office of a pro organization and work my way up to be a GM. That is like what I wanted okay. to do. Um, and so, you know, when I was in college or actually when I got out of college and, you know, went off to the NFL, got fired a bunch of times and come back. And my dad is literally like, Hey, here's a business. Uh, at that point there was multiple business, but here's one of the businesses you're running it. Th this is what it is. I'm like, man, I, I don't know what to do. Like, it was like it was, one, it was only like one or two trash cans. Uh, oh, though, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was one truck and like That's nine dumpsters, right? Yeah. It was one truck and nine dumpsters. I'm just trying so, to give some context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was one truck and nine dumpsters. And he I don't want to take away from what you built. Yeah, well, that, thank you. Yeah, but so he God. literally, I remember him looking at me as like, you can't fuck this up. You can't like <laughs> figure like, it the dude, fuck yeah, out. Yeah, like dude, you can't fuck it up. You could do what, make whatever mistake you want. There's nothing you could fuck up right now. Like we've got a couple thousand bucks in this thing, right? Yeah. And as a side project, so um, I'm like, all right, well, at that point, I pulled out a yellow pages, or my dad gave me a yellow pages book, and he goes, so start calling restoration companies, start calling remodelers, start calling all these people, and I'm like, okay. So what it did was it took me back to Trestle and Urban Days, mm -hmm. right? Like how did they uh, get the message across to us from being the head man to say, hey, this is what I want you guys to believe in. This is, what I, this is how I want you to execute it. So then I'm starting to think like, okay, so now I go into sales mode. What pitch am I going to give these people to motivate them to come with us? But then on the back end, how am I going to motivate the one driver that I have in yeah. order to be there right on time, in order to do those little things that – uh, set yourself apart from the competition. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as I started building the thing, I was like, I still don't know what I'm doing from a business standpoint, but guess what? I know how to motivate people from Trestle and Urban, what I learned there. Mm -hmm. I know how to perform a service because when you run out on the field at, at Ohio Stadium, if you don't perform on a Saturday, yeah, you're sitting, you're, sitting, you're done, right? You, you got 100,000 people in the stadium plus another however many million watching you on TV, you got to know how to perform. And so uh, even even now, man, you know, we're running 35 trucks now. I've got like 54 employees. So went from the one person to now so where good. we're at now. It goes back to that same person I was in 2016 when I took over the company. Guess what? I still will be the first to admit I don't know the, uh, I don't know the accounting side of things. Yeah. I don't know the nuances of running a business, but this is what I do know. I know how to motivate people. I know how to build a culture and bring people together based yeah. off of what I learned from them. I know that guess what we need to perform or they're going somewhere else, you know? And I think it's the reason why we've grown so much is because we do perform. And yeah. you look at some other companies, you're like, fuck it. It's one customer. But if, if you know, fuck it, it's all right. Well, guess what? That one customer turns into another customer, which yeah. turns into another customer, just a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, man, it, it's crazy because people look at me in Columbus, Ohio now and they're like, man, those guys are great businessmen. Not really. I uh, mean, I, I will say we're, we're actually probably really shitty businessmen because, <laughs> because you know, I'm, I'm not the smartest guy. Danny will tell you, man. I'm definitely like, not either, yeah, brother. You know, I, was like, I was like a 3.0 guy in high school. Like, I'm not some rocket scientist. Yeah. You just, at the end of the day, every day is game day. You need yeah. to show up and make sure that, guess what? We perform today as good or better as we did yesterday. My dad's famous. I hate to go back to my dad, no, but my dad's famous quote was, you're either getting better or worse every single day. So how we performed yesterday, guess what? We better perform better today because otherwise we're worse, you mm -hmm. know? And so it's a, it's a thing of constantly making sure the culture's good, constantly making sure that uh, we're doing the little things to, to be great as a company and building it that way. But it also goes, yeah, I mean, it's Trestle and Irvin sitting in those locker rooms, seeing how they – and the great thing was they were so different. Very you know, different. <laughs> completely different personalities, completely different ways they went about running one of the top five programs in the country. Uh, but I think for me, it helps me out because now I know – how I how I get the message across to you and how I motivate you from a business standpoint could be completely different than Danny, yeah. right? And if I was only under one of those coaches, I might not realize mm -hmm. 
to the extent that that goes. But, you know, I, I talk about this with my managers all the time is that you have to know who you're talking to because people are going to respond it's different true. ways. And so that's another leadership thing that I learned from Tressel and Meyer. That's what, not, what was like so different about them? You know, Tress was uh, Tress was kind of the silent assassin. You yeah. know, he's the guy, very quiet um, until he gets into a uh, locker room or you know meeting room, whatever it might be. But he he completely controls the room. But he's never raises his voice. He's very kind of monotone. Hey, this is what we're doing. Very X's nose. This is a game plan. We're gonna be you know we're gonna be the best versions of ourselves, and we're gonna go out there and we're gonna attack them, and this is the way we're gonna do it. You get Urban on the other hand, Urban will go in there and it's like guns a blazing, right? Yeah. He's like, I don't give a fuck how we do it. We're going to win this game. And guess what? While you're kicking their ass, I'm going to be kicking the coach's ass. And it's just like, it's, it, they're completely different motivators, but motivate people the, the, the same way. My comment about, I've been around both, uh, mostly Trestle, but I was around Urban a couple times and then I'll throw it to Trey because he ain't talked very much, but is they're both extremely confident, but completely yep. different. And that is what's unique about like Tressel is like I, he's super humble, but yep. he is a killer though too. Yep. And that's when you're around him, you can feel it, and you can feel when on Urban maybe it's a little bit more. Urban feels more rock star to me. I don't know why he always yeah. did, and Tressel feels more senator. But the right, yeah, but but accurate. the confidence yeah. is just as elite, mm -hmm. but it's so different. And if you can get a mix of those that coaching style and that vibe. That's what I thought was interesting because I was only around Urban one concentrated time, but he walks in the room and it just, it's just yeah. an it factor, right? But Tressel feels the same way, but different. So it is, Tressel feels more approachable, to be honest. A hundred percent. I'm know. super close with, uh, well, well, super close with Urban, but still pretty close with Tress, but yeah. you're exactly right. Tress is the approachable um, you know, it's, it's, uh, has anyone, if you guys seen the Sean McVay interviews where he will go back like three years to the play and know the time on the clock and yeah. have you seen, yeah, it? I think, seen that. I think they were doing, did it like last year before the Super Bowl, or whatever. And he was like, Hey, tell me about this play in week two or whatever. And he would <laughs> rattle off all this stuff. Mm. That's kind of how Tress is. Tress would be like, you know, we're going to win this because we did this in practice at this time. And when they give us this, we're going to do blah, blah, blah. Urban's like, fuck it. I don't care what they throw at us we've trained so hard and we are just soldiers and we're going to go out there and we find a way to win. That's the way it's going to be. So it's like, it, like you said, it's more Senator and polished with trash. Yeah. Whereas an urban is like rock star. I don't give a fuck who we're going up against. I don't care if the, if the pro bowl team walked out there, guess we what? We got this. We got this. We're going to find a way yeah. to win this game. I just saw a clip from urban actually randomly on TikTok before I came in and he, he was saying like, he, I want to evaluate practice. It wasn't good enough today. It wasn't good mm -hmm. enough today. But I think we all know what that like. He just I think he, it sounded like he was always reminding people there's more, there's oh, yeah. more, there's yeah. more. And I think we all need reminded of that very often. Hundred percent. Like if we had a bad practice, Tress would be like, afterwards would be like, hey, why do we have a bad practice? Let, let's think about this. Let's actually put our thinking caps on and let's take a deep dive into this. If we're having a bad practice with Urban. Urban blows the whistle, pulls everyone up, basically says, hey, fuck this. We're starting, pra hey, we're yeah. starting practice over. You got a choice. Guess what? You, you can either turn this back on and we're starting practice over, or guess what? We'll just keep on running this thing back. And we'll be here till midnight. I don't care. So you wh know? Which side, what style do you kind of vibe with more? Where are you uh, on the spectrum there? What'd you say? What do you think? Yeah, no, my personality. What I just want to hear you say it. Uh, <laughs> urban, 100%. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. urban, 100%. Yeah. And I think the, the reason why is because – goes back to uh, my business talk. I'm not the I'm not the analytical guy to sit there and think about things. I'm just like, hey, let's do it. Let let's find a way, you yeah. know. And um, I, you've played with me before from been in a locker room with me in high school, and it's kind of like I want the head coach that wants to go out there and fight the guy just yeah. as much yeah. as I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want the no holds bars. Let's go. But I still, I mean, I still love Tress and love playing for Tress. I feel like so. in my mind, I would definitely. I, Urban would probably vibe with me, but I feel like I want to be like Tressel. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, like yeah, yeah, that's, yes. that's, yes. he feels stoic yes. to yes. me, yes. but, but I feel yes. like I would, I'm the type of guy, I'm a raw, raw dude. So I yeah. want fucking screamed at and challenged. I want to be Tress off the field. And yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. 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 I yeah. like it. So like, hold on real quick. Yeah, with good. like, with like confidence, like how you even like think about the word when we, when you say confidence, like, I mean, I remember like you coming over from North to central and the first, I don't know, it was probably the first practice or one of the first practices 
in the field house or something like that. And, like, you can tell when, like, someone has, like, a certain level of, like, self-confidence about them just by how they walk around and carry themselves. Like, how, how do you kind of think about um, or how did you build the confidence over the years? Is that something mm. you learned from your family, your dad? or Is there anyone that you kind of look to or any resources? Yeah, you know, uh, Danny, damn, I've done a lot of interviews over my time. I don't know if I've ever been asked that question. It's what we, uh, we talk about job, that Danny. a lot around here. I know, shit. Was your neck uh, size? The traps? Yeah. That's what I would say. You know, it's one of those things. It's because my wang's <laughs> big, Danny. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, I'm a six foot white male. Yeah, Come on, it's not the case, you know? trying to help you out, brother. Yeah. While you're thinking to answer the uh, question, yes, you know. Um, you know, I, I, uh, when you ask that question, I, I guess from my standpoint, I don't even think about it. Like, I don't see myself as a guy that just boasts confidence. I don't think I'm sit. I, you know, I remember that practice. It's so funny you brought up that my very first practice was in the indoor, right? I was like, well, we're and, all just like, well, this fucking guy. Because, like, <laughs> me and, like, Jared DeVore and Troy Thompson yeah. and, like, some other guys, we're, you know, on the scout team. Right. You know? And yeah. then, like, Zach's on the fucking D-line across him, which is fucking eating us alive. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I think it's – uh, you just – I think once you kind of accept who you are and – um that I don't want to use the word confidence because you asked me how you get that confidence. But once you kind of know who you are and you trust yourself mm -hmm. and you put in the work in the off season and you do the things when no one's watching, that was a quote that everyone brought up is what are you doing when no one's watching? You know, I think if you do the right things and live your life the right way, you're going to have a confidence about yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and there's dude, there's been times where, I think everyone lacks confidence. Everyone gets into those, the, yeah, those ruts where you're like, man, and you almost know it. You're having self talks. Like, what are you doing? Like, this is not you. And so we've all been there. And mm -hmm. you know, I think in that situation, it, it was such a whirlwind of a uh, trans. I, I don't want to say transformation, but it was a transfer right from mm -hmm. north to central. It's like rivals in the middle of the year. And I think my whole thing was, I'm just going to shut my mouth and be who I am and play hard and do the little things that I know should be done, you know? And, and it goes back to my parents raising me the way, the way they did is, you know, you always got to be on. There's no, no fucking around. It's Hey, business all the time and and when you have that free time what are you going to do with it you going to work out or are you going to mess around and and run around and and do stupid shit right and mm -hmm. so um yeah man i like i remember that but i i'll also be the first to tell you that i don't think i boast confidence all the time i don't think i walk around and man people look at me and the first thing i say is that's a confident dude because i don't think about it that way mm -hmm. i just walk into a place and i am who i am i'm gonna you know shake people's hands, be respectful, um, do the right things. And if that's called, you know, having confidence in, in people sensing that, then I think that's a huge compliment. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. to, to, that's a massive compliment that you just gave me. And I guess from my standpoint, I don't know how to respond to it because I'm just being who I am. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's the, is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From, like, from like the outside looking in perspective of like, I mean, I was around you and Kobe the most. Yep. And, like, you both had it, which I'm assuming, you know, your sister and Justin have it, too, and everything. But I think you as a family, and it makes sense that it would really start there, you know? Yeah, no, it does. And um, there's <clears throat> something about an overconfidence, too. Mm. And I think that's something that being in my family uh, that I hope to pass on. And it's also kind of my group of friends on who I who I keep company Peter's with. Peter's not it's, confident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's something that uh, – the overconfidence thing, you, you need people around you to keep you in check mm -hmm. because the time when you're overconfident and you think like, Hey, I got everything figured out is the time you're gonna get hit in the mouth. Yeah. You How, know? How's that work with your lady too, by the way? Is she, oh, is she an fuck. equalizer for you? She is an equalizer. Yeah. I think that's why I married her. You know, <laughs> Let, let's be Mine honest. Is too, yeah. bro. You know, she, she's, uh, she's awesome. She, she keeps up with me. She, you know, I think it was the first time in my life and maybe this is a confidence thing too. And maybe that's why I'm so attracted to her. I remember, uh, one of the, one of the very first times we had just started dating and I do a lot for the Buckeye cruise for cancer, which is a mm -hmm. huge, huge, uh, fundraising thing and charity network. And so we go to this party, uh, at the founder's house and there's probably, I don't know, a hundred, 150 people there. And she had never, uh, met any of these people. Right. I was just like, Hey, 
you know, we just hung out the night before, went dinner. It went really good. Do you, you know, I'm going to this event tonight. There's just drinks. It's kind of what you want to come with me. And so I remember walking in and I was like, Hey, you know, I'm here. If you ever need me, blah, blah. We walk in there and I'm starting to say hi to people. Literally we're five minutes in this thing. I look around. I'm like, where the fuck is she? I'm like, where is this girl? Right. And actually, you know, like, you know, I start like looking around, looking around the house. She's fucking having conversations and like running court in the kitchen. I'm like, <laughs> dude. So it's like, you know, that's when I was like, hey, this girl can keep up with me. Yeah. I know the I know uh, this girl's going to be able to keep me in check because of the way that she's like, hey, I don't fucking need him. You know, like, hey, I'm going to meet these people, you know, introduce myself. This is who I am, you know, and have conversations. And right when that happened, I'm like, that's awesome. she's the one. Yeah, that's pretty cool. No. Okay. Trayvon, your turn. Um, I'm curious, like, how you want to, like, instill, like, the confidence and, like, the stuff, like, that you learn from, like, your parents, like, into, like, your kids, like, when they, like, eventually when you have them? Um, that's a hard, that's a hard thing. We, uh, we talk about it all the time because, um, you know, when, when Rachel and I talk about having kids, I'm like, man, I want, like, four boys, you know, I, I just want, you know, a lot of testosterone running around the house. Like, <laughs> of course you do. You know, yeah. Like, I want to like fucking spirit each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, right? Like, I want to freaking wrestle these dudes and everything yeah. else. Uh, so I think one way of being a parent and, like, what that looks like, but then again, Rachel always messes around with me and says, like, you know, the Irish hair test. You guys ever heard of this thing? No. Her ladies at work do this Irish hair test where you, like, take a piece of your hair and, like, put it on the ring and like it tells you how many kids oh, you wait, have or whatever. Yeah. 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 And like yeah. this one lady at her work is <laughs> yeah, Irish seven and, like, girls. and like swears by it. No, it was four girls. <laughs> yeah. And I'm yeah. like, fuck, <laughs> you know? So like, um, so if it was four girls, I think it would look a lot different, you know? And yeah. so, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a running joke actually between Rachel and I right now. It's like, uh, well, was there, um, I, I tried to do this with my kids or I'm attempting to, it's like, was there, did your dad ever give those statements? Like, this is how we operate. Like, is there like, this, the you're born. Yeah. This is how we operate. And I try to tell my kid, like it, it started when my daughter was competing in gymnastics, AGs, you know, pitching like sports where they're individual. I'm like, Greg, we show up like, yeah. that's what we do. And I, and I was trying to let them know, like, that is a, like you've worked in this other shit like this is just how we operate and i tried to like instill that young gamer yeah, yeah the yeah. gamer mentality and i just wondered because your dad's obviously a winner bro so i just wonder if he had that kind of vibe to him um too. this is gonna i don't know if this will uh uh make you think differently my dad yeah. but my mom was the one that was like this is how we operate really this is it this is how that. we operate my dad was the one who judged whether it was good or bad. Okay. So, you know, my dad was the one who my, or my mom would be like, Hey, this is, this is the born name. This is how we do things. This is our family inside. Now I'm going to instill this, this, and this in you that there's, there's no other way to do it. Yeah. It's this shout way. out to mom. Yeah, no doubt. My, my mom, my, now my mom is like the matriarch. My mom is runs the whole show. Now my Hell dad's, yeah. you know, my dad's having cocktails. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but growing up, my dad was the one that was just like, you either exceeded expectations. Or you didn't live up to them. It was as easy as that. And then it's kind of like the urban and trestle approach, yeah. right? My mom was much more like trestle, like, hey, this is how we do things. If you didn't live up to those, those expectations, wh why? You know, what's going on? She was the first one there for you. And my dad was basically, no, you need to perform. Like, yeah. if you I didn't more. do Yeah, I need more. Like, this is what I need to do. Danny, Danny will probably vouch for me on this one. My dad, up until, you know, the last game I played playing football, but in high school, he would stand right by uh, the walkway to the locker room, mm -hmm. right, at halftime, mm -hmm. and he would give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Nothing else. No words. <laughs> no words. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down, right? And then sometimes if he gave me a thumbs down, we'd exchange some words, That's right? That's amazing. Yeah. But that was it. You know, and he just kind of shrugged. Even in college, I knew exactly where they sat in the parent section. He'd give you the same? My dad would give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. That's it. No other words. You know, sometimes if it feels a thumbs down, he'd give me a like, like what, what the fuck? You know, like, yeah, like, what, what are you doing? This. Yeah. This is so like, what good. Are you doing? Please tell me you're going to adopt that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. You're like, but, uh, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it was one of the things my mom hated the most, yeah. but, um, and it caused a lot of fights. In but you house, knew you were going to get it straight, so you looked I for knew, it. I knew I was going to get a grade, and I wanted it. Yeah. I wanted to see what, what he thought, you know, yeah, because yeah. I wanted to make sure that. I was living up to his expectations, and he was the greater. That is so fucking good. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Trey, you got yeah. something else? I'll throw it back to you again, buddy. You, um, I was curious, like, uh, like if you wanted to share, like, a specific, like, situation, like, with each coach where you, like, learned, like, a lesson, like, that, would, like, just sticks in your mind, like, a kind of like a core memory with each of them, like, a nice great, situation. Great fucking question, yeah. Trey. Yeah. Um, so, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. so, I know uh, with Tress, there were, there were kind of two things that stick out to me that were learning moments with Tress. And I know the one, um, when I was a true freshman, I, I, you know, I came to Ohio State, I blown out my knee the last game of my senior year of high school. And so I'd went through rehab and spring ball, you know, did all that and come the fall. I'm like, man, I want to play, right? Like who doesn't want to come in and, and start as a freshman? And so they had moved me from linebacker to fullback because there was more of a need there. And I remember our very first game my freshman year was we were playing Navy, Mm -hmm. the Naval Academy. And so during fall camp, obviously there's periods throughout camp where they do scout team of of the team you're playing week one. And so, you know, I remember I'd get reps with the offense um, because I was fighting for the starting position. And then they would run me as soon as, you know, kind of my plays were up, they'd run me over to the other field to play scout team offensive line. And so, you know, I'm That's getting in a four. Awesome. I'm getting a four point stance as an offensive guard right at 250, 255, because yeah. that's what Navy Academy guys are. That's true. And dude, I'm going against Cam Hayward. I'm going against all Who's these a beast, dudes. Oh, yeah. Beast, right? One of my favorite players. Yeah. So I'm going against these guys. I remember there was just at at some point there's just kind of a a, a light that goes on, right? Like, hey, this is what I need to do. And I remember I had put a couple really good practices together, and then finally I'm like, hey. Fuck it, man. I that confidence. I'm like, I'm. I got this. So, man, I would like try and ball out on offense, right? When it was the first team offense that was going, run across to the other field. I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be these guys' biggest fucking headache in the entire world, right? So, I, <laughs> I'd get in a four point stance and I would just go after these dudes, like up until the whistle, like man. And you know those guys, first team defense They're linemen and like, all Big Ten guys, like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Like, get off. And dude, I was just like that gnat that like wouldn't go away. And finally, like one time, uh, I, I may have hit Cam a little, a little late, right? And uh, just giving all my hell, just wrestling, you know, going like crazy. Tress comes up and grabs me, and he never like whatever. He goes, "Get your ass over there!" And like threw me towards the offense. And I never saw another down to scout team offense ever again. So like that was it. So at over that delivery, point, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. So at that point, I'm like, yes. And then uh, I remember Tress. Tress never tight. You know, he ran a fullback offense. I think. No one really uh, appreciates the fullback, but Tress was that guy, like old school guy. Like, yeah, he just, yeah. he gets I, it. I do. Yeah, who, who was ahead of you at that time, Zach? Uh, who were you fighting against? So uh, I was fighting against Adam Holman and a guy named uh, George. Uh, oh, my God. Is it Secretus or something like that? I was just trying to remember. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, uh, wh- whatever his name, I'm totally drawing a blank on his name. Could have come back another year, but ended up just retiring from football. The fullback right before me. Got uh, it. Dante Johnson, who probably yeah, yeah. you're thinking of, but he was gone in, I think, 07, like got two it. years before I got there. But Tress, um, Tress, like, fullback, that was like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, that, you know, that was like, hey, man, I appreciate you. Like, my offense kind of goes around the fullback, yeah. which isn't really like that. So, appreciate you. But I remember um, my sophomore year, we're playing Michigan, right? And uh, this was like Tress's, I think, like, thank you to me. I remember, you know, we're playing Michigan, we're kind of beating their ass. And it's, I don't know, middle of the third quarter. And it's like a third and one. And we're deep in our own territory. And uh, we're, there was a timeout. And we're going on the field. And Tress calls like fullback dive. And never, never gives the ball a fullback. If it, <laughs> like, you know, I, I'm like, <laughs> but I remember he calls the play in like the huddle before we're running out. And then grabs me when everyone's running out and looks at me and goes, don't fumble the football. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks, coach. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So I, I didn't, I didn't so fumble, good. but I think it was just his way of like, hey, yeah. man, I, I got you one. You yeah, know, like, yeah. thank you. Sure. Thank you. Just make sure I don't regret my decision. So you good. get a first down? Uh, I did get a first down. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did get a first down. So. <laughs> you get up and like flex or anything? Yeah. No, 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 no. I handed the ball to the official. I made nice, sure that nice. ball was not seen anywhere <laughs> close. Most of the guys yeah. that played for him, though, it sounds like, and Maurice used to talk about this, like moments like that, like when he was against Washington, first couple of series didn't go very good, and Tress said, look, you got to do something this series, yep. or I, I, I'm going to have to take you out, and that's when he broke the touchdown and it's kind of yeah. the rest is history. It sounds like Tress would give you a heads up. like For sure, he would. It goes back to that coaching leadership style of like 
he'd get in your ass, but it was such a subtle way yeah. that it kind of was like, okay, whereas an urban, I mean, he'd lay into you right yeah, on silent. Yeah. I mean, you guys have seen it. He's throwing the headset. Sure. Tress was never like that. And he never wanted anyone else to know. So like those little moments, he'd kind of grab you. And it was like a real subtle, it didn't raise his voice, nothing. It was just like, to the point, this is it. And you kind of, at that point, you're like, I know I got to perform. You know, I know yeah. this is my spot and I can't let him down. Exactly. There's more right so there. that, right? Like yeah. I didn't want to let him down. Whereas in urban, you didn't want to fail. You were scared to fail, you know, and, and, and Tress was like, I could fail because I know he's going to pick me back up. But in those little moments, you just didn't want to let him down. Yeah. Um, Both very then, strong emotions. Very much yeah. so. Very much so. And then urban, man, mm, you know, uh, there's a there's a bunch of stuff with Urban. So Urban, you know, I was with Herbs for uh, 11 months, you know, from January th through November. And there's so many stories. I mean, he's got books written about that year and just how him and I would bang heads, you know, uh, a, a lot. But I, I'll go with, like, the very, the very first and the very last experience I have of him is I remember um, we had just gotten beat by Florida in the Gator Bowl. And... Um, you know, I, I'm not even undressed in the locker room. Everyone's pissed off. We had the first losing season in 100 years of Ohio State football. Think about that. Ohio yeah. State football, first losing season in 100 years. And that really. was his first year? No, 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 no. That was my junior year. Okay. So he, yeah, But yeah. he was appointed coach in December. I got but it. But okay. hadn't really, you know, it was a fixed year. Yeah. And so um, Urban called. My phone's going off. It's Urban in the locker room. I'm not even undressed yet. And he's like, gather everyone together. He goes, let them know 5 a.m. team meeting tomorrow. And normally after a bowl game, like that's one of your breaks. I, th I think as a player, you got like four breaks. You got one right after the bowl game, one for spring break, uh, one for like a maybe only three, and then like a summer break right before fall camp. That may have been your only your only three breaks. So you're saying right? you just got done with the bowl game. You're no, not even undressed yet. No, I'm in the locker room. And Urban Meyer's calling, calling you, me. Yeah, saying yeah. team meeting tomorrow at five. No doubt, because as soon as that I clock, hit, love that energy. As soon as, soon as that <laughs> clock hit zero, yeah, Herbs took over. That's right, right. Okay, so okay. the clock's yeah. at zero on the on the on the. And on he's the calling clock. you. And he's like, "Hey, I'm the fucking head coach of Ohio State now. This is this is my show, right? So yeah, so damn. He's, so he's calling me, and he's like, "Get the guys together. We're having a team meeting tomorrow morning." So we show up, and um, there were like eight guys who didn't show. Right. And so he looked at us. It goes back to the run in the practice thing, says a couple things for about 10 minutes, says this isn't how we this isn't how we operate. Um, everyone better be here. And the guys that aren't here, you guys better fucking tell them they better be here. So he's like, we're going to run this back. 5 a.m. meeting tomorrow. The next tomorrow, day. The next day. OK. Right? So have 5 a.m. team meeting. Three guys didn't show up. He's like, oh, OK. I see how this is. So has a meeting um, says at that point. It was probably like a Thursday, and he's like, uh, Monday, we're going to be out there 5 a.m. on the outdoor fields. And he goes, if you guys don't want to buy in, we'll get you to buy in. So we go out to 5 a.m. fields, and the entire facility is locked. The Woody Hayes is locked. Like, they won't let us in. So we have to walk around the parking lot to the outside, and we get there, and we're wearing all of, Ohio, all of our Ohio State stuff. You know, you're just wearing your sweats and stuff. Makes us turn it inside out. If you were showing up in that jacket, he'd say, flip it inside out. And they're like, what the fuck? He's like, you guys don't deserve to be Ohio State football players. you got to earn your right. And so we flip everything out, right? <laughs> flip everything inside out. Are the guys and, looking at each other like? like kind of like, what the fuck? Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm what, sure. You know, I think the first day, everyone's kind of like, all right, dude, like, really? Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, like, dude, we had just gotten our ass beat. Like, we've had a long year. Like, no break at all. Like, really, you're making us do this. And so, uh, do we get, I remember this vivid, we get in lines of, uh, there were 10 across, right? 10 across the goal line and like nine deep at that point, right? Like 90 guys. And so I'm right in the middle, uh, the front, front, front line or first person line right in the middle, you know? And, uh, we start doing like bear crawls and scolded dogs and army crawls and lunges and all kinds of stuff. And so you're going as the first person, you go hundred yards everyone follows you right yeah. and it's like every five yards they blow the whistle next person goes well get to a point where i think we're doing scalded dogs you know what scalded dogs are no so you know what bear crawls are yeah. right so scalded dogs are you're on all fours but one leg's up in the air like dog got scalded oh, like you wow. smack a dog so you're essentially doing bear crawls on on three two, two, you know one one leg 
in two hands, right? So you're kind of like jumping, you know, kind of going <laughs> that with it. That sounds terrible. Uh, terrible. And, you know, we're 45 minutes into this workout, and it's freezing ass cold. We got no gloves. You know, it's like snowing outside. And, um, and mind you, 5 a.m. in the morning. And, you know, you, the guy, the offensive lineman who, you know, a freshman offensive lineman or whatever it might be, who a little out of shape, would like go to their knees. As soon as they went to their knees, Urban would blow the whistle. Everyone had to go back. <laughs> so like everyone, so you know me as I, I'm the I'm the guy in the front of the line in the middle of the pack, right? And I'm like, hey, I'm gonna set the tone. So I'd get out. Johnny Simon and I were right yeah, next yeah, to each yeah. other, and we get out fucking flying, right? And we'd get to a hundred yards, so then we could turn around and go back down the field to try and motivate people to not go down. Well, when guys went down, like fuck. All right, we're going back. Like, we got to do it again. You know, so we were doing, I mean, dude, like thousands of yards of, of all this stuff. And so uh, it gets to, so Monday happened, Tuesday happened, Wednesday happened. We finally get to Wednesday, and guys are just, like, mentally breaking. And oh, I'm like, yeah. this is, we are going all week. I'm like, man, we're still not allowed in the facility. We still got to wear Ohio State stuff inside out. Um, at that point, he had said, if you didn't show up at 5 a.m., you're, you're, off, you're off scholarship. There were three guys that week that got kicked off the team. But we get to like Wednesday and we're, you know, we're like 45 minutes in at this point. I don't, I'm sure, I mean, you guys train hard. You get to that point where you're like, I'm just, I'm mentally in a fog, right? Like I am just, I'm so zoned in. in. I'm so zoned in that I really don't know what else is going on. And so, you know, I remember, uh, going, I think we were doing bear crawls at this point and we're doing bear crawls and I run back and I just start yelling, you can't break us. You can't break us. And like at that point, like I'm trying to motivate the other guys because yeah. they're, I know some of them, you, you can, can just see it, it on their face. They're just mentally fucking broken. And I'm like, like you can't break us. Like we got this, like finish all these things. And Urban, I remember Urban going off. If I wanted to fucking break you, I'd break you right now. Like, and, and, you know, it, it he's got books written about it. Yeah, about yeah. How, and, you know, he, he acts like I was challenging him, but in the moment, like I'm challenging the other guys, you know, like <laughs> you're hey, talking to yourself. No, no doubt. Yeah. Right. Like I, I won't mentally get broken. Cause I knew if I was mentally broken oh. as a senior captain, everyone else is mentally broken, you For know? Sure. Uh, but it was crazy stuff, man. I remember he'd put us like in a, in a, he called these things called quarter eight quarter eagles you'd get into a squat air squat right like a football position mm -hmm. and they'd have you in it for like four minutes okay. okay and every time they'd blow the whistle or he'd be like one right and he'd blow the whistle and everyone in unison had to go a quarter to the right and he'd say like two right and blow the whistle and you two right you know as soon as anyone didn't go the right way or someone was off unison you started over so you'd be like two minutes into this thing and he'd be like all right, shake it out. We're going right back into it until people went four minutes of these quarter eagles. It was fucking miserable, <laughs> but whatever. I mean, it made Urban who he is, right? It Facts. made the program. And then uh, the last one I would say, and and this gets brought up to uh, the point of why I loved playing for him, is you go to the last game of the season uh, against Michigan. We were bull band. You know, it was like we oh, weren't playing right. for anything that year. So through all the shit we went through, it's like, Boys, we got nothing to play for. So here we go. And we were 11 and 0. And I remember, uh, you know, it was kind of snowing that morning. It was a cold ass morning. And we get to our pregame meal, you know. And he normally would always uh, address the team before we'd go up and like put on our suits and then before we head out for the walk. And this, it just felt different. You know, obviously it's a Michigan Ohio State yeah. game and it was Urban's first one. He had never, he grew up in Ohio, but had never been in the game. And he starts going off about uh, kind of the training throughout the year and how everything comes back to the military. And he's like, you know, we've been 11 strong. He used to always say 11 strong because there's 11 units, position mm -hmm. groups. He goes, we're 11 units strong. And he goes, you know, we've been busting down these doors one by one. And he started rattling off like week one who we played, week two who we played. And every time like he would rattle off a team, he would like get like angrier and angrier. And then finally, he's like, we know these motherfuckers are sitting behind this door. He goes, we've had open doors this entire, no one's behind any of these doors. And he goes, this is the last fucking door we're going to open. And he takes tables and fucking flips it, <laughs> sends it flying. I'm here for and, it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, these motherfuckers are behind this door. What are we going to do about it? It just, did like, you guys light the fuck up? Oh, dude, I think every table in there was like flipped. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, That's yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. 
but you know it goes back to uh, you know that year we went 12 and 0 but it was just like we weren't we weren't skilled he'll tell you it was the worst team he's probably ever coached from a yeah, skill yeah. standpoint we just you know you look at the nfl we have we have some dudes but just as a team standpoint top to bottom by all means his least talented team there's just no way we're gonna lose you know, it was, yeah. yeah. Like, we wanted to go out there and get in a fist fight. That was the only way we were going to win games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I, th- I think one thing, like, we need to hit on is being the ultimate team player. Can you talk about the conversation you had whenever you jumped from offense to defense, that which led to yeah, the yeah, iconic so picture? Too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they, um, so throughout that year, you know, how we started off to where we went, Urban and I, as time went on, started getting closer and closer. And, uh yeah, I remember they. He didn't run a fullback, but you know when he came in, I was probably two sixty uh, playing fullback at that point. He's like, "Dude, you need to get two forty. You need to drop twenty pounds this off season. I got two forty, right? It was just like this is what I'm gonna do. And uh, you know, in spring ball, they were messing around with me, kind of putting me in that wide position and doing some different things on offense. And we get to the season, and hell, they were moving me around, putting me, you know, kind of that Y position that you see now. Put hell, put me at tailback some stuff because they didn't really have a boom had just left. Yeah, they didn't really have a tailback. Well, as the season went on, Carlos Hyde started coming on, okay. who was a dog, a beast, right? And Braxton started taking over games that they're like, hey, you know, they were still trying to find ways to uh, get me the ball and keep me in the game, and. They were doing a great job of it, but then our linebackers started going down. And so I remember we were six weeks into the season. We were going to play Indiana. You know, I'm sitting in offensive meetings on Tuesday, and I think Coach or, or Urban and maybe had just been brief that, like, one of our starting linebackers had broken his hand and could, was out for a little while, had to get, like, pins put in or something. And uh, so he comes over to me in the stretching line at the same position I was that I just told you, right, you know, right in the <laughs> middle of the goal line. And uh, he's like, hey, you're going to linebacker today. I'm like, all right, yeah, sign me up. Like, I'm fucking Fuck in. Yeah. You know? I'm like, hell yes. <laughs> linebacker so to high State, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm in. You know, but I played linebacker my entire life. Yeah. It goes back, my dad played linebacker, you okay. know? So it's like, that's what I grew up on. I'm like, all right, I'm at what, whatever you want, I'm good. And uh, so literally stretching lines happen. We split off. I go with the linebackers, and kind of the rest is history, dude. So that's a Tuesday. I had to learn the defense in about three days. <laughs> go, yeah, go out to the game against Indiana and start playing. And um, Were you pumped when you ran out for defense? I mean, was yeah, it like – Yeah, I was like, pumped. That was yeah. probably the only time I've ever been a little nervous. Yeah. Because, you know, it, you got to know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, uh, the great thing was still one of my really good buddies now – Ryan Chazier was yeah, playing next to me, right? right? So yeah. when you've got Ryan Chazier playing next to you, I remember him and dog, I. All, dog, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I remember him and I all the time. Like I went out there against Indiana, and I'm like, hey, you know, he'd call a defense. I'm like, hey, j- remind me, right? He's like this. I'm like, perfect, got it. And uh, the only issue was, I remember we got up on Indiana, motherfuckers start going two minute. I never learned two minute defense. <laughs> you, never, <laughs> you never practiced that. I'm like, fuck. I'm looking at the sideline. I look at Ryan. I go, dude, you got to get my back. Just yeah. help me. Help me. Yeah. Yo, they're running crossers and going. I'm like, no huddle. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, but that's amazing. Who was fun. the other linebacker? So it was you, Ryan. That's and- it. We only played oh, two linebackers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, so we were playing like that nickel, that nickel yeah. package. So the iconic, you know, hit, the picture, everything like that. Do you remember that play vividly? Can you give us a breakdown? No, not really. You know, it's one of those things that you're so in the zone. Oh, and you know, and, I, and yeah. I've talked about how you were in, uh, you know, the training in the off season. They get you to the point where you're so zoned in, you don't think about anything else. Kind of like everything goes numb, you know. And so, everyone, one of the probably uh, main questions people ask me: What's it like running into the stadium? Uh, to be honest, you're so zoned in at that yeah. at that point, especially if you're playing, mm-hmm. like. It's just people. It's just a sea of people. Like, I didn't think it was any any different than running out to a high school field right down in <laughs> the ditch at Pickering Central. And people probably laugh or think that's stupid. But just in that moment, man, you're so focused on the game, just doing your job. You don't think about anything yeah. else. Mm-hmm. Until yeah. you get removed from it, I feel yeah, like, right? No, then no, no, you're no. Like, was, there, was there any subtle thought, like, after you flexed fucking right over him that you're like, that was pretty fucking sick? No, because I didn't even realize it. In the moment, I didn't realize it. You I know? feel like that's something you figured out after the picture yeah. started circulating. No, 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 huh? it was. It was yeah. right after the game. So I remember uh, I remember it happened, and it was just one of those things like, man, our, you know, the defense needed a, a play to be made. It happened. And then I remember coming off the sideline. And at this point, Urban and I, like I said, have a better relationship. He goes, he goes, you're fucking lucky that wasn't flagged. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got true. it. Yeah. I, look, I remember looking at him and go, coach, 
there was no flag on the field. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> say that bitch is on about yeah. two thousand dumpsters yeah. out here now. Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember we, you know, we left. Uh, I had media afterwards, showered up. I was one of the last guys to leave. But my parents, obviously, had become friends with a lot of the other parents uh, on the team, and uh, they had like a tailgate main area that a bunch of my buddies we'd go to after the game. And uh, I remember showing up to the tailgate, and like my dad had the picture. Someone had texted it Fuck to him. Yeah. And I'm like, Fuck, oh, yeah. All right, yeah, all right, yeah that's, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Like, I didn't really think anything yeah. of it anyways. I was thinking about getting fucked up that night, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, like, hey. I like the truth. Yeah, you know, I was like, hey, man, we're Speaking we're, of that, Cole, you got to yeah. get it signed. He's got it right over there oh, by oh, the way. Yeah. 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 Well, all right, hold on. I got one question. I think, uh, you know, me and Small Arms, you know, as generals of the Arms Army, it would be a disservice not to get some <laughs> training talk. So, you know, I would consider myself, like, third team yeah. all neck, yeah. but you're first team all neck. So what's, like, the best <laughs> neck exercise, Great whether it's shrug, Oh, whatever man. What, what's your favorite uh my neck probably went down a couple inches too from when it was i mean i used to have a, a <laughs> thick beef a beef thick stick oh, like, oh, God, like yeah. a fucking rhino over here, yeah. you know? <laughs> um you want to know something i loved uh the old school neck machine yeah I we got one up there do up you there. yeah okay yeah. love yeah. the old school neck machine man. Sideways, I remember, oh yeah like, sideways <laughs> the ford <laughs> Um, you know, but I, I also like, uh, if you really want to fuck yourself up, do a burnout going to the sides and then get someone to do manual on the front. Oh, of the yeah. Dude, we used to do that shit. At, yeah. At practice, at, at, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. practice and I stuff, forgot but, about uh, shit. yeah, they really, I learned that one at Ohio state. As so you're they, walking out of the gym, you might have to hit a quick set. I, I Is that might, what man, you I get? My neck would be stiff. Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah. 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 So they, uh, yeah, at Ohio state, that's how they fuck us up. Like at the end of a workout, we do probably like 25 to 30 reps each side and then they go and have a strength coach and you'd be laying on a bench so literally you had like it's not like you were sitting down because some people do it sitting down you would lay horizontal on a bench with just your neck uh kind of the top of your shoulders yeah. off and they would just fuck you up and you're just like straining out of your neck i remember my <laughs> fucking neck like pulsing and but yeah um we're all homies with braxton and obviously yeah. you saw some crazy athleticism from him he's a cool dude in general right i just like being around braxton talk about maybe like you ever see him do like something where you kind of i'm sure you did like be like damn that's like just different because he I, is just I, I, different i'll, I'll tell you the one play that always uh sticks out to me but yes in practice <laughs> You know Braxton. He's kind of like the the silent assassin, right? For just sure. goes about his business, just does what he does. Yeah, he's low key. Yeah, and uh, you know Braxton will probably be the first to admit this too. He wasn't the best practice player because yeah. he'd go and just be like, "Hey, fuck it, I'm going through the uh, motions, right?" I'm he's good. gonna ball out on yeah, good day. But there, but there were times in practice when he really wanted to fuck with someone. Dude, people couldn't touch him. I mean, <laughs> the dude just turned something on, and everyone be like, "Oh shit!" But the one that I really remember, uh, and they played on Braxton highlight tapes was 2012 at Penn State okay um you know they're going into we we were driving it was kind of a, a tight game um and they're driving into the student section and it was a whiteout right and Carlos Hyde's just making play after play just chunk plays and there was a play where it was a it was a read option down by the goal line oh yeah Braxton pulls it literally makes one juke another juke and literally jukes backwards, backwards that i've yeah. never seen before yeah and then literally dives over someone who's on the ground and on this you know what that point you know you're normally because i was on defense and you're normally like going over stuff like hey what's going on you know this is probably what they're in go go to you kind of always look to the future right like hey if we go up here this is what's going on if we go three and out this is probably what they're in go to so you're mm -hmm. going over all these different situations but once a team kind of gets within 10 yard line, you're kind of like, all right, I'm watching up on the, on the big screen. And he did that. I was like, holy shit. I, everyone looked at each other like, everybody on the sideline, yeah. like, y'all see that? Yeah. Like, is that real? Like, did that really just happen? I've never seen, he literally made three jokes and the last one was backwards. We might have to pull that clip yeah, and to, wrap yeah, that with that. 100%. Cause I remember that play. It was insane. To. It was insane. Insane. <laughs> and I even think Braxton just be like, yeah, you know, I was just, Doing what he's doing. Dude, he, the, the thing I, I love about him, he ain't really caught up on himself at all. No, not and, at all. He's completely, uh, I think, opposite of what people would think. And he don't mess with a lot of people when he's always, like, super low-key. Like, he, he reminds me of kind of like a hippie in a way. Like, yeah. he just kind of flows with everything. But I, I've learned to really, really like Braxton because of that. But even after a play like that, you, like, you would think, especially nowadays in college football, yeah. someone would fucking be taunting, like, look what I did, look what I not did. Not at all, Dude, probably. A, a, everyone would come over, and he yeah. just... Dap you up. Uh, everyone's like, holy shit. And he would just dap you up like, hey, man, I just 
doing <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, so all right. that kind of leads into the next question I was going to ask is like, what was, uh, you know, you went from, you know, high school football to college football and then, you know, in the pros and everything. Yeah. What, who was like one or two people that like you really saw they were like on a whole fucking different way of operating? Maybe not just like talent or like, but just like compl- like all the way around. Yeah, I was, uh, I was in L.A. this past weekend um, doing some media stuff around the college football um, national championship game. And I was sitting with, uh, I had dinner with these guys from University of Georgia, big donor guys. And they asked me that question, right? And, um, and this kind of goes back to the confidence thing, but it, it, people don't take it as an overconfidence. Just when you are on a field, um, you have to be so zoned in and you have to be, you have to trust yourself. I remember telling those guys, I go, it didn't matter who showed up on that field. We had the mentality. We we're going to fuck them up, you yeah. know? So it was like, I never once thought, um, Oh my God, th- this is who I'm playing against or, Oh my God, that dude is so good. Maybe on film, I'd be like, okay. But during the game, I'd, no, there was no one that was so good that I was scared to go up against, mm-hmm. but I will say <laughs> this, there was one person that I have seen absolutely dominate a game. Um, you know, I've seen some throws that you're just like, Oh my God, but there was one guy who dominated a game and then I played with him, uh, in the NFL, uh, JJ Watt. Yeah. So, um, you know, JJ was a guy that, uh, at Wisconsin, when he played, when they played us, my junior year, basically made him a first round draft pick. I think he had six sacks against us. We were number one in the country. It was college game day. Wisconsin was like ranked like twentieth or something. They returned the opening kickoff. The fucking Camp Randall, I thought was gonna <laughs> blow up. Like yeah. it was. It they was said going it's wild. loud there too. Oh, it's loud. It's loud. And then JJ had like six sacks and just ate our offense tackles alive Fuck. to the point where like, we, what are we gonna do? You know, and Terrell, uh, yeah, yeah Ter- TP. Ter- TP was uh, uh, TP was a quarterback, and TP can run from anyone. Yeah, and JJ was just sacking them like crazy, and then uh, got into the NFL. And uh, at that point, you're like, hey, man, he's a good player. Mm -hmm. Then got in the NFL, and I remember a training camp uh, with Houston. And there was a time where Kubiak basically like, JJ, get the fuck off the field. Like, we we had went like six plays in a row, and he made every play. Uh, You know, first team offense versus first team defense. Literally, first (laughs) one-on-ones. He made like six plays in a row, and Kubiak's like, dude, we can't practice the offense. Like, get off the field. And they literally held him out of practice. There's like like, three-year period where really he he – he basically dominated. 100. I mean, literally like three years where the, and boom actually mentioned it. We just showed boom yesterday. He's like, dude, that's all they talked about in the meetings in yeah. Indianapolis. How do we, you have to have three guys on him. But like you said, he went like three, three to four years where he Total was like domination. unstoppable. Granted, he, he fell off. I mean, he's still yeah, a great player, but stuff. yeah, some injuries and everything, but man, his, his first three to four years in the league. Insane. Unreal. I mean, unreal. I, I think tell- they do what they said. Um, what he had twenty sacks playing defense tackle position. He was he was yeah, playing yeah. the five tech. You know, he's That's not even right. a true defensive end. He was playing the five tech in a in a three four defense. You know, there's normally someone outside of him. He's going inside on the big uglies. He had like yeah. twenty sacks one year. The only other person that even is in that ballpark is Aaron Donald. Oh, that yeah, that yeah. like would really in that position. That's uncommon to handle a game like that. It's really those two guys. Hundred percent. I think Aaron Donald's been dominant longer. Yeah. But I think JJ in those three to four years is probably more so, dominant than, yeah. than Aaron Donald for Pretty sure. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. You guys have anything oh, else? <clears throat> what a great episode. We're, we're at, we have to come have him come back again. 100%. We'll we'll just we'll do some arms. the day we do Pilates. We'll just <laughs> podcast on that day. Pilates and arms. <laughs> I know you're not a big social media guy, but where can everybody find you at yeah. if they Z-born need? Zborn forty four on Twitter. Um, same thing on Instagram. But uh, yeah, man. And Good if job. they're in the local market. How can they get one of those fine looking dumpsters you flexing yep. on? Yep. Go to uh, bornbrothers.com or call 614 397 9688, man. Hell yeah. Give us a shout. What a fucking great episode. And, and Danny, I love hearing old football stories about you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, awesome. hey. Hey. No, hey, well, now Dan, I'm, like, yeah. I'm thinking of like when we'd watch like film after the fact. Yeah. And like one play when we played Upper Arlington in the playoffs. You remember that? I, I remember that game at Gehanna, but what play are you. <laughs> It was, uh, I think it was, we were playing up Arlington, but I, I, I was in the back, I was in the backfield on goal line or something and I jumped off sides and it, 
And it looks it looks so funny on film. I don't know why. I was the I, only I, person I, that fucking yeah. moved. But I like fucking twitched forward or something. I, like completely fell forward. I, I do think. remember that. Is that the one where he f- yeah it fell over? Yeah, and Sherry yeah. just kept replay yeah, play. He replay. fell. Over. <laughs> he, he <played laughs> yeah, yeah was, Danny like jumped. I do remember this. It wasn't like a hand. It wasn't a two way. He jumped off sides and literally like slow motion like nose dive because he was trying to like hold the position. <laughs> yo, it's like <laughs> yo, it's yeah. just, like did you have a nickname back then? Like what were, what were you called before small arms? Did, uh, did he have a nickname? No, he didn't. Not really. Just, did everyone call Somebody in college called me D Train. That was pretty. Oh, nice. D Train. Cool. Yeah. D Train. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that guy yeah. stuck. Yeah. <laughs> jo- Josh uh, or Christoph would call me. He used to call me D D Wall or D Wally. D Wall. D Wally. I'm definitely oh, wow. going D Train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Small yeah. Danny, aka D Train. Uh, D Train. You know, pretty D- good. D- uh, I I I used to always call him Danny. Like, yeah. Just Danny. You know, and because. Because Danny was a dude that just, uh, I mean, he was a guy who, like, never really said much, but he always practiced hard. Solid. Uh, just all around, like, good dude. Like, he was a guy that could fill in on any position. Like, dude, he'd play defensive end, defense tackle. He'd fill in on the offensive line anywhere from center to guard to tackle. Played, you know, would do some tight end, would come back and play fullback. It was I just like, that, yeah. yeah, just the dude Utility. that would <laughs> do everything. Hey, at one point, we had that, uh, at, at one point, I don't know if you remember this or not, the, uh, so we'd get in that goal line formation, right? Mm-hmm. And we'd call it in the middle of the fucking field. It didn't matter. Dude, like, I just, was so pumped. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we'd call it wherever. But I remember there was one time uh, we're like, hey, everyone knows we're running the football when we do this. And we did like a toss, and I had a, a halfback pass off of it. And I think Danny was supposed to be the one that like got I, the pass and line up. And then we actually called it in a game. It was John Harlan who, yeah. who got it. I, yeah. yeah, it was fucking bullshit. Damn. Yeah, so good. Dude, if I would have scored a touchdown, I would have probably punted the ball in the stands or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Danny would be the one in no emotion. But if that yeah. happened, oh, he'd be yeah. the Just one flagged. Nuts. Yeah. 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 I'll take, I'll take, take off the shirt. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Well, uh, it was awesome having you here, Zach. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll have Thanks you back for, for sure. Me, and uh, Roundtable Podcast, I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms Danny, at Trey Speed, and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Brought to you by MaxEverMuscle.com and Sam Adams. We are out.